Welcome everyone to another episode of the Adeptus Redemptus. <laughs> <laughs> going to be teaching us about the most ridiculous things in Warhammer 40k, but before he does, if you enjoy today's podcast, head over to patreon.com slash adeptusridiculous and get a bunch of really cool stuff for supporting the podcast. Access to our Discord, really nice HD posters, you know, things like that. And when we hit 15000 a month on Patreon, we will be doing a Demon Kilbasa episode. Um, so yeah, patreon.com slash adeptusridiculous. Bricky, where can these Fine folks, find some fine ass merch. Oh, they can find some fine ass merch at orchidate.com <laughs> or in the description. And we have new merch. Whoop whoop. Woo, we got new shirts and new hoodies based on our wonderful animation, the I'm a tank, I'm a tank, I'm a tank orc animation. Oh, it's, so good. it's so it was I was like, there's no better choice. And it's Orctober. Of mm. course. Of course. So even more so. So get yourself some new merch, a shirt, a hoodie, green as can be. Uh, Hell maybe yeah. A little bit more like a dark green, but whatever. Whatever. And get yourself some good I'm a tank orc merch and uh, and do it quick because yeah. it's not I, about. I don't, it's not I don't only imagine about, that's gonna. <laughs> are you gonna... It's not Go only ahead. about the merch, DK. It's about, about the, the Mets. It's about the Mets, baby. The Mets, baby. Go it's Mets. about the orcs, baby. Love the orcs. <laughs> Love the crump. Love the orcs. Also, don't forget to read Brutal Cunning. Yes, for the book club. Brutal Cunning. Orc book, yeah. mostly. It's funny. I'm only a little ways into it, but it's hilarious. It's it's the perfect depiction of uh, 40k orcs just having a blast. Do they do it similarly to how they did it in uh, Infinite and the Divine? The short period of time they did it works there. Um, better. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's high it's, praise. It's, it's really good. Yeah. So I don't, I won't spoil any of the good parts. I'm an right. hour and a half in, but yeah, it's it's cool, cool. Chef's kiss, if you will. Chef's kiss. So pick up new merch. It's about the merch, and it's about the merch. It's about the merch. DK, do you know what today's topic is? I don't think we spoiled this one. No, I was spoiled on Percherabu and the Iron Warriors, but today I I don't know. It's Oh. It's Did you want to take some guesses? Uh sure. Um I will I will I will guess since we just did Percherabu and the Iron Warriors, maybe Fulgrim? Nope. There's it's no Space Marine Legion based things. Oh, so it's a Xenos thing. Um, or an Imperium thing. This isn't a guess. I just found it hilarious that I didn't know about this uh, just because we mentioned Xenos. Uh, someone on Twitter informed me that Tau have hooves and not feet. And I found that very odd. And That is unsettling. Unfortunately, yeah. that is not the point of our entire episode. Oh, is man, on... we're not going to do an episode on Tau hooves? Now, if we were going to do an episode on feet, it sure wouldn't be the towel. <laughs> yeah. Ah, ah. <laughs> so what are we doing? We're doing orcs, but we're oh. not just doing orcs. We're doing the orc. We are doing oh. the big man, the big boss. We are doing... Oh, goodness, his name is so long. Ga Gaskul? Difficult. Glasgow? Is that what we're doing? Ga Gaskul Mag Uruk Thraka. Oh, nice! He has the such a big. sick mini! That that mini came out, like, less than a year ago. It's really new and really cool. Oh, it's so dope. I love that. So, I guess... I'm, I'm ready. I guess Gaz Kull means metal skull. Mag means big or great. Uruk means warrior. And Thraka means leader. So, he's metal skull, big warrior boss. Big warrior <laughs> leader. Which is ironic because I don't think he has a metal skull, does he? Oh no, Look I guess he kind of does, doesn't he? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he does, he does he do. have a metal skull. Yeah, I only saw the little small picture. I was like, wait a minute, he doesn't have a metal. Yeah, he does. His, his whole head is metal. Yep. So I'm gonna preface this. 
because there are two particularly very big, very important events that occur during the discussion of our good man Gaz. Uh, and those are something called the War of the Beast and another one called the War for Armageddon or the Second War and Third War of Armageddon. Uh, both <laughs> of these are very, very, very long and have really? a lot of a lot of moving parts and a lot to talk about. And I'm probably not going to cover them in the majority. I'll mention them because it's important to talk about our big lad. But I'm, I'm going to skim through those a little bit because those are like probably worth an episode on their own right. Okay. They sure don't fuck around when they name these wars. The war for Armageddon. Like, <laughs> and the <laughs> war of the beast. The war of the beast. Like, Jesus. That's like the war of Satan and the war for the end of the world. Okay, cool. cool. It's, some, it's some neato stuff. Yeah, so there it works. let's let's talk about some history. Well, let's, let's let's get a good let's get a good orc quote. Even though I can't do a British accent, you gotta try. No, I don't. If you're doing an orc quote, you gotta try. That's the rules now. I I, I will say the the quote with <laughs> the way they spell it, but I won't do any British bullshit. <laughs> Fine. Listen, man, I don't want to make fun of myself any more than Coward! I already do. <laughs> you want to you want to read it? Maybe. All right. Here you all right, I'm copying it. There it is. Read it. Oh, I'm warlord Gazgul Mac Uruk Thrakken. I speak with the word of the gods. I'm the prophet of the war, and all worlds burn in my boot prints. There you go. It's actually pretty good. Yay, um, yay! That was unironically not that bad. Holy shit, Let's you should be our go. dedicated orc boy. I will gladly, I will gladly lead the orc wah on this podcast. I am, I am fucking flabbergasted. Even Shy <laughs> says that's not too bad, which is basically a 10 Whoa. star. Whoa, that's, that's more than 10 stars. That's like the infinity logo next to a star for, you know. Infinity plus one. <sighs> Motherfucking child. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gazko Mag Uruk Thraka is the uh, current orc warlord of the Goths clan and is the most influential orc currently alive. So, uh, they came from an, a frozen orc world known as Urk. U U R K. Urk. Oh, that sure irks me. Those are some Drums. irks, some orcs. Drum set, shy. Please. Thank you. Um, it was originally a human colony known as Eurocles and founded during the Dark Age of Technology in the, ex the exploration fleet they had way back when. Mm -hmm. And at a time, it was kind of this thing where, like, the tides of the warp kind of fed into this planet really well. It made it for, like, a really good port city, basically. You know, the because, you know, you have to sail the warp tides, and, and then they yeah. it kind of went here pretty easily. Um, so it was a prosperous, like, really powerful trade hub. Uh, which eventually is the reason the orcs were brought in at some point. And okay. eventually when the orcs got there, well, they killed everybody or <laughs> other, everyone else died. Lots of murder. And then some of the orcs left their little spores there on the planet, of course. So eventually the Eldar moved in and then the orc spores kind of became its thing and then they killed them. And then the Hurud, <laughs> remember the Hurud from... Uh, uh, yeah, 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 the, the time shifting... Yeah, yeah. Uh, they would they would so do that nice. and then they died and they just it's just like a constant like orcs other xenos orcs other xenos then eventually humans again would come by and colonize during the great crusade by the dark angels uh, and wow. so for the next 2000 years after the great crusade it became a normal somewhat average ass hive world uh, and then till a Massive ass green skin wah arrived oh. in something called the A War of the Beast. So, as oh, stated, we're gonna <laughs> we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna talk too much about the War of the Beasts because it's a very, very, very long thing to discuss. But it involves it involves a gigantic, enormous orc leading it, known as I think just the Beast. Oh. I think it was it, it's I think assumed that he was actually a crook like the OG Necron era oh, orcs. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, but basically, Vulcan front of the Salamanders basically took him, and they both like blew up. Oh, and like and a thermonuclear Vulcan... detonation. And then Vulcan just respawned. I think I think that's the last we've seen of Vulcan. Oh, that was the okay. So that's why Vulcan is on his respawn timer is because he took the beast and. I, I think I think he suplexed him into like a nuclear reactor or some bullshit. It was that's a hell of a way to go. Like taking him to <laughs> Suplex City right into a reactor. That's that's pretty hard. I don't <laughs> I don't entirely remember exactly how it went, but I, I'm pretty sure. Again, I don't want to cover the War of the Beast too much because oh my god, okay. it's so much. Um, but I can yeah. only picture Vulcan as Brock Lesnar now, just suplexing some fool orc into into oblivion. Is that a is that a wrestler? Yeah, he's he literally whenever you hear a wrestling fan like scream suplex city, it's because Brock Lesnar all he does is suplexes. That's it. That's his that's his move set is like thirty suplexes in a row. Well, there it is then. Um. So anywho, <laughs> after the war, so the awkward. beast happened. I, I, I don't know. It's like anime <laughs> wrestling. I don't know. Um. One final freighter escaped. This place. This thing called Dominion. Uh, this big freighter called Dominion eventually escaped. It was the last uh, thing that escaped this planet, and the orcs had full control over it. It was the largest orc attack of all time, and it shifted the tides of the warp itself around the planet so much that that system was actually really hard to access now. Oh. Um, because of just the sheer volume of, like, psychic orcs and messing with the, with the tides sure. of the warp and yada yada. So that planet became an orc planet. It became Urk. <laughs> and Urk was orcs for about 8,000 years. And all wow. the orcs did was beat the shit out of each other. And there was a bunch of clans there. And no clan could really best one another. No clan could really get the high level. I can beat you. So after some time, because if you do the math, it's like Great Crusade. Then 2,000 years, so 32,000. Then 8,000 years, for, so 40,000. So it's like oh, they're doing okay. the math here. Yeah. Um, so eventually the Imperium had learned by studying orcs and orc stuff that should an orc become a war boss, lead the orcs on this planet, the amount of like orc spores would increase tenfold. And then oh. that amount of orc <laughs> spores would then act as a psychic beacon for other orcs to arrive. And this... Oh. <laughs> you know, became it a bit of a problem. <laughs> yeah. So they established a big ass monitoring outpost on the planet way up high in the mountains. Uh, and I believe it was actually by the Dark Angels that set this shit up. Um, the Dark Angel Space Marine chapter. Yeah. That's gotta be and, a risky place to set up a monitoring station. Like that whole planet's orcs. Like well, none of the orcs thought to be like, oh, it won't say up there. And check it out? Well, that's interesting that you should say that, because some orcs said that exactly and went to go check it out. <laughs> um, granted, it was very high up in the mountains. So, it was far. But, uh, at this point, this is when the Goffs clan, G-O-F-F, Goff, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if that's supposed to mean something, like a, like a joke. Any any football fans out there will know it stands for a really bad quarterback. Anyway, go ahead. Boomer references. Jared um, Goff. The, anyway, go ahead. Gaz Gaskell was actually a trooper in the Goff clan and took part in a raid on that Dark Angels command sanctum. As in the remote island, but even then, you know, the orcs found the way. Sure. So what happened, and this is when shit gets fun. So Gaz took part in that fight. And he immediately took a bolt around to the face. Oh. <laughs> and a sizable portion of his brain and his face went completely to mush. Like, oh. literally turned into paste. However. Uh, that's why he's got the metal head. However, he stood right back up, half of his face missing, and oh. he was like a stumbling wreck bumping into things and he was holding his brain and the rest of his skull in his hands trying to fit it back into his head <laughs> and so his own group his own mob decided to trade him to a death skulls pain boy which is like their doctors called Ooh. mad doc grotsnick now oh boy 
he was a crazed Death Skulls pain boy, and they traded Gaz into him for exactly three teeth and a new shiny chopper. Wow. What would become the legendary, like, Gaz Skull gets traded for three teeth and a chopper? A shiny chopper. Uh, sorry. A shiny. God, really? That oh, seems dude, crazy. Or- these are orcs. They don't give a fuck. That's, uh, that's fair. So, Mad Doc Grotznik snitched him together. Oh, by the way, um, uh, Goths are kind of like like melee. Uh, Death Skulls are, I think, blue. They're like the lucky ones. Oh, okay. Um, so the Death Skulls uh, doctor Grotznik snitched him together with bionics, wires, and squig sinew, and then <laughs> put a giant adamantium plate in his face and held it together with rivets. Oh. He riveted it into his face. And Fun. then, shockingly, Gaskell randomly awoke. He said he saw more clearly than he ever did before. And it had nothing to do with his new bionic eye, which apparently sucks ass and he can barely see out of it. <laughs> it's just there uh, for decoration. You know, he can use it, but it's like he's got like 20 hundred vision. Oh. Um, he <laughs> believed, he believed he saw... The embodiment, or he saw Gork and Mork. And he was literally in contact with Gork and Mork during his surgery. And that he was the living embodiment of their divine wishes. He woke up like, I am the prophet of the Gork and the Mork. (laughs) It's me. (laughs) It's me. Yep. Damn. Uh, So as he woke... With his a new thought that he was in fact the true embodiment of Gork and Mork, he was the divine master of Gork and Mork. It says, "Quote, uh, you know what? You can read this one." Oh, DK. okay. I'm the hand of Gork and Mork. They sent me to rouse up the boys to crush and kill, cause the boys forgot what they're here for. That's good. I was about to say, ow. <laughs> That's kind of brutal on the throat, but whatever. It's, 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 you know, content. Content. <laughs> content is king. Con- content is king here. It's not always about the content, DK. It's about the Mets. It's about the Mets, oh, Mets. baby. Mets, it's about baby. the Mets. It's about the Mets, baby. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so he basically grabbing his new adamantium forehead, he like stumbles out of the pain boy uh, tent. And then the Death Skulls warlord named Dreg Mech got really mad wondering what a goth was doing in their camp. Oh. And he was like, what the fuck is a goth doing here? What the Zog, whatever they say. Um, <laughs> so Gaz looked at this Death Skulls guy and he just like clenched his fist and started walking towards him. Oh. Kind of like, oh man. And so the Death Skulls guy, you know, the war boss expected this and immediately pulled out his gun and started firing all like five barrels, whatever, how many barrels that fucking thing has at Gaz. And miraculously, every single shot missed. Oh. Wait. And <laughs> this is the I'm scene a... from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> yeah. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Mm. Maybe he just like, had shitty aim. He ran out there, fired six shots with the revolver, and then... But yeah. remember, this is the Death Skulls. These are the lucky ones. Oh, that's true. They're blue. They're blue. So, every bullet missed. And then Gaz came up and beat the uh, Death Skulls warlord to death so bad that the Death Skulls were cheering, cheering him on. Oh! <laughs> His own group. I mean, then, I, I knew once he came out of that tent and he saw that death skull, like he was like that death skull was going to get his ass whooped because this is, you know, this is the the ascension of gas skull. But damn, you know, Pulp Fiction moment, a little Pulp Fiction moment ran up, beat the shit out of the war boss and then headbutt him so hard it killed him. And then on top of the body, he claimed that he was the prophet of Gork and Mork. If anyone wanted to challenge him, they could come one uh, one at a time or all at once. I don't care. What and then and, and then an hour later, of fighting later, anyone that challenged him were dead. 
and he then began uniting the orc clans. So he he therefore now had the death skulls kind of under his ring, mm-hmm. you know. So now he had to deal with five more. He had to deal with the evil suns, the bad moons, the snake bites. Uh, I think the blood axes. And that sounds orc to me, yeah. And then the goths. Um, I forget how he got the blood axes, though. Shit. Damn it. Okay, so for the evil sons, evil sons are, are I think, the red ones. I'm, at least yes. I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure because they are the ones that go fat. Yeah, they're the red ones. They're the speed freaks. They go fast as fuck. They are they, super speedy. The, the evil sons make a brief appearance in Brutal Cunning. They get made fun of. Um, I huh. think... I think they're they're, they're going to go fight some ad mech, and one of the bosses is like, oh, yeah, they're squishy and weak, kind of like the evil sons. And the evil sons get like, mm, fucking bitch. Mm, yeah, but they're fast, though. That's yeah, the point. They're fast because they're red. So the most surprisingly, Gaskell had coerced the fastest orc on the planet to duel him in a one-on-one racing duel. And the fact that Gaz, who's a big ass dude, was able to actually beat the grand speed boss Shazfrag of the Evil Sons <laughs> in a duel of speed had him winning over the Evil Sons. Then wow. he had to go fight the Snake Bites and mm-hmm. decapitate the war boss twice, I guess. Twice? Did he grow his head back? I don't, I don't know what the deal with that is. The snake bites are like the old school orcs. They're very, uh, like, lots of squigs and tr- more tribal, like uh-huh. like mounts and stuff. No, yeah, yeah. no technology. Um, gotcha. And then he had to, he sabotaged the bad moons, which I believe are the gun ones, where the bad moons would constantly roll up, shoot them, and then roll away before they could catch them. Mm-hmm. And so he actually did some really intelligent orc stuff. He burned a bunch of shanty towns and use the smoke to mask his advance, and then sabotage sabotage one of their refueling stations, oh, and then came funny. in and came in and beat their ass. So then he had yeah. the bad moons, and then he had to do a headbutting competition for the goths. Oh boy, that's like of all the things you could challenge Gaskell to. Why would you choose a headbutting competition? Well, because they thought the the orc war boss of the goths was too good. Can't confirm. He's got a metal head. Can't confirm he was not. Gasco nope. Thraka wins the uh, won the headbutting competition. It's probably the easiest one to win for him. And Jesus, why would you do it? Anything because, else? Anything else? Because he's because he's a fucking orc. He's crazy. He's crazy. Oh, he just want and, to fight. And he's a badass. So now with that, and maybe the blood axes. I don't really know. I don't remember. Basically, all of the major orc clans were under his control. And also, yeah, you don't really say no to a challenge by an orc. Like, oh, well, I suppose that's fair. So if Gaskell was like, Oi, I'm going to challenge you to an Ed Button contest. The other one's like, oh, sure, mate, that sounds like a good challenge. And, yeah, um, yeah, you know, they want to have a good crump. And if he wins, then he gets to take his head. He gets to take true. his metal head and, and make it something. Or if he wins, he gets to take all of his teeth. And then he's rich. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if he loses, well, he died in a good fight. Yeah, you know, that's that's the point of orcs, is that even if they lose, they win, because they got a good crump, and they can come back and kill you later. Fair enough. Okay. I'm using too much reason with the orcs. That's the problem. Like, too much logic. Like, the orcs aren't logical. They just want to fucking fight. Yeah, you, you, gotta, you gotta think of them as a very base concept. Yeah. That's why the biggest orc is always, like, the strongest orc. He's the most respected orc, because he's the biggest orc. He's not necessarily the smartest orc, he's just the biggest, strongest orc. Yeah, he's the biggest orc. So, after all the clans were under their control, Gaz started, like, rallying up the clans. He was the prophet of or- of Gork and Mork, and anyone who dared challenge him would get crumped, and a lot of people did, and they crumped, and they got crumped. Mm-hmm. And so, after some time of them really kind of getting all their stuff together, building their weird ransack and ramshackle stuff, then the sun started to show some really weird phenomenon. It started to like blink and dim. Oh, that's and there were there were some weird solar flares happening. Uh It was getting very strange. So Gaz (laughs) looked up at the sky and was and said more. It was almost like 
I am I am the divine might of Gork and Mork. Look, the, even the sun says so. And he said, all right, we got to leave. That's a sign from Gork and Mork that we need to leave Urk behind. And because orcs are ready for to fight across the galaxy because orcs are never beaten. And so we're leaving in a week. A week? And okay. A week. And they had no aircraft to speak of. Oh, <laughs> they, they've never traveled into space from Urk before. They have no, they've never even flown. They don't even have planes. Uh, they might have some like planes, but they don't have any rockets. <laughs> and they're going to leave in a week. So the orcs, they, so they, they dumped a space Hulk. The warp spit out a space Hulk near them. And oh, if you remember what a timing, <laughs> you remember what a space Hulk is. It's like a, coagulation of ships yeah they, they they went into the warp and they all just kind of got together yeah so imagine think of it like the night lords thing the covenant of blood yeah imagine that but they it no clipped into like 11 other ships think yeah. of the size think of the size of that that's that's, that's big it's that's enormous big there is a so, space hulk at the beating of brutal cunning oh i think orcs like their space hulks a lot. Yeah, they're, they're, they're literally riding around in a space Hulk. Okay, well, that makes it a lot easier to describe then. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, basically what they did is they harpooned the space Hulk from Earth, or Urk, Urk. And, and they <laughs> shot rockets into it with themselves on it. You know, uh, they didn't yeah, have guidance systems. That's a very Orc thing to do, sure. Yeah. Sometimes they missed, sometimes they blew up, sometimes they flew. Yeah, you know, they... <laughs> They found a way, a, a, like a bunch of fucking orcs, tons of orcs. I think in like the millions, I think like in the billions, so many orcs Whoa, went into this damn orcs. space Hulk. And you know okay. what was inside the space Hulk? Um, warp shit. Lots of demons. Humies. Demons. Oh yeah, that's fair. Demons. It was in the warp. Demons. Demons. Yeah. Demons. demons. And with Dang. a bunch of demons, so the orcs had to go fight them dumb, squishy, weird, pink demons all sure across they this. That? They did, and it was particularly neat when, in the middle of the Space Hulk, the main craft that was made out of the whole Hulk was the cargo freighter Dominion, the original freighter that left the War of the Beast thousands of years ago. Oh, that's. I'm assuming that's not a coincidence. Well, Gaz didn't think it was a coincidence, but more importantly, the fear and terror of the fleeing humans attracted the warp entities. And oh, then okay. they got they got taken. So when they got to the dead center of the Space Hulk, they found a warp rift, like a tear into the into the warp. Mm -hmm. Uh that was spilling all the demons out. So the first thing that Gaz did was immediately start having everyone shoot at it. And it didn't work. So then they started ha punching it. And it didn't <laughs> the work. next logical step. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and then Gaz was like, all right, there's only one way to deal with this. And he screamed as loud as he could and headbutt it. <laughs> and then by doing so, there was a little green pop. And then the rift closed. Oh, my God. <laughs> Coincidence? <laughs> Probably. I, <laughs> Mental psychic energy? Maybe. Maybe. Gork and Mork? Who knows? <laughs> Point being, you just give it the biggest fucking headbutt. Like, that's that dude, who would win? <laughs> One trillion lions or the sun? <laughs> the sun? Who would win? I mean, that's a lot of lions. That is, but it's the sun. That's what a lot are, of lions, what, DK. What are, what are the lions going to do to it? Now, 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 DK, one million orcs headbutting the Eye of Terror. I mean... It stands I, no I, chance! I, sure, man! I, I, lo I love the, the progression of that. It's like, oi, oh, shoot it! It's not doing nothing! Punch <laughs> it! It's still not doing nothing! Oh, I'm gonna headbutt the shit out of it! <laughs> like, what? <laughs> What's gonna, are just whoa. so weird. What's gonna win? A portal into primordial dimension of madness or one greenie boy? <laughs> one greenie boy, apparently. One greenie boy. <laughs> it's just orcs are great. 
Parkers it, it's are so really fun. Yeah, it's so dumb. It's so wonderful, though. <laughs> so I believe that this Space Hulk was now <coughs> known as the World Killer. Of course, nice naming. I like it. I like it. The World Killer. And so they all, all the different clans kind of had their way around. They had their own little areas in the world, Killa. And there was a ton, if I'm not mistaken, um, the rivalry kept the tensions just right to prevent, uh, you know, the orcs to grow too bored. Some of the iron decking was reworked into battle wagons or stompers or stompas okay. uh, or beaten into armor around the knobs. And a lot of, like, several warbands were swept into the warp when they overstretched their boundaries and cut away sections of the ship's actual walls, and then they got sucked into the warp <laughs> when they were traveling. Oh, my God. They were like, we got to make more, we got to make more battle wagons. It cuts a hole into the side for more Shit. scrap. Just gets sucked <laughs> out. <laughs> Oh my, the orcs are the levity <laughs> that the 40k universe needs. God damn it. <laughs> That's so fucking funny, oh my god. Uh... God, god damn it, there's a, there's, a, there's a meme that I saw of like a, a fucking... Uh... Damn it! I, I, I saw this, this um, like, gif of a minion from Despicable Me, like, mm -hmm. getting sucked into a hole. And and then it turns and the hole says League of Legends and he starts screaming. I'm imagining ah. that where it's like they they're slowly cutting it open like Whoa! the warp. <laughs> um, so that actually allowed some other warp entities to re-enter it. Some more demonic incursions kept on dealing with the journey, and oh, so sure Gaskell had that to... was probably a lot of fun for them. Sometimes, uh, often Gas had to deal with them personally. And whenever big battles would break out across the Space Hulk, there was a ton of wah energy. And so the orcs multiplied to a pretty insane degree. Oh, like, so actually kind of a good thing that that happened. There were tons of extra orcs thanks to the fighting of orcs with more <laughs> demons and shit. <laughs> That's, oh god, orcs. <laughs> I love orcs. orcs. <laughs> I love orcs. So eventually, hole in the ship, demons come in, have to fight the demons, multiply. More well orcs, done. they get better. Well, I guess it's good that they're stupid enough to cut a hole in their ship. So eventually, the orcs emerged at the edge of a star system. Uh, and um, uh, before them was a major realm of planets, like a system, and it was known as Armageddon. It was a industrial giant for uh, humanity, for mankind, the Imperium. Um, the, it was about they named the system Armageddon. <sighs> Armageddon is actually is an Imperial hive world, an industrial world located ten thousand light years away from Terra. Oh, okay. it is the it is the fourth in the its star system of ten planets, and is an industrial hub of the Armageddon subsector. Uh, so it is. It is a hive world, an industrial world. It is known as Armageddon. Yes. Sounds doesn't sound like the place you want to live, right? Where do you live in Armageddon? Mm. They actually, they actually have a a particular Imperial Guard regiment based around Armageddon. Oh. Uh, they are okay. known as the Armageddon Steel Legion. They kind of have like a mix between Krieg. And the Talon Desert Raiders. Oh, that's a um, cool helmet with the skull on it. There. That that looked dope. I like that. That's pretty dope. This is this is more like what a normal Armageddon guardsman looks like. They they kind oh. of have like like the the gas masky thing, but it's it's not like a yeah. Kree gas mask. Um, Definitely looks like uh, someone that's fighting in the trenches for sure. I like that first. Yeah, one. That first one's way cooler. There's there's another a pretty good one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think they're definitely based a little bit more on the World War II Germans. Gotcha. Uh, whereas Krieg was was the Kaiser and World War One Germans. Mm -hmm. um, though these guys are really all about like mechanized infantry. Uh, they're very much like stormtroopers and shock troopers, and I, I think they do have like a sort of Blitzkrieg thing. The, the concept is that they are, they fill up with a ton and ton and ton of like chimera troop transports and they just like run at people and they get out and they blast everything they get back in and they drive forward and they get out and they blast everything it's very it's very blitzkrieg kind of yeah. style Ooh, uh, 
I'm I'm assuming at some point uh, these fuckers fight the orcs. They do. It's the the War of Armageddon, as uh, yeah. as you mentioned. Um, though that, I, I, I mean, guess it's uh, very very similar to what the orcs do. The orcs are just like, oh, we got numbers, fucking go, and yeah, yeah it's pretty blitzkrieg versus blitzkrieg, basically, right? Uh, well, actually, in a sense, yeah. The orcs just have all their other weird shit. That's true. <laughs> and when they emerged the system, they were heading straight for the planet, uh, okay. for the core, for the core planet. And it was going so incredibly fast that it would not stop from crash landing into Armageddon, the Space Hulk. However, Gaz did not wish to halt. Instead, he com he built his acceleration and went faster. Oh. And and he drove really fucking fast the entire Space Hulk directly through into Armageddon sky. Oh. And. And they literally crashed the entire thing dead into the fucking planet. Oh, he crash landed the space hulk at like max he, speed. He used it like a meteor. There, there were there were imperial wow. fleets. There were missiles. There were orbital defense lasers. <laughs> he literally rammed into every imperial vessel, unfortunate enough to just happen to be sitting there in space. As oh he just God. slammed his way through everything and plummeted directly into <laughs> Armageddon. Jesus, that's, I mean, space hulks are huge. Like that, uh, you could almost take out the planet that way, couldn't you? The like, entire if you're going planet max, shook. I, I was gonna, it, as well, it should. Like that's, that's almost a cataclysmic event, isn't it? Uh, it, it crashed into their biggest continent, and, like, it, it caused, yes, it was, was like, some say, dinosaur could, wiping shit. Yeah, that could be Armageddon for Armageddon. A little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hundreds of thousands. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> hundreds of thousands of orcs died. They were immediately, like, immolated into fire. Um... So, but that was like a teeny, tiny, teeny little percentage of oh, the yeah, amount of orcs on that like, ship. You said there were like billions of orcs. There were like, so like billions. Who cares? Ga about a few thousand, yeah. Gaz claimed it was protection from the gods, uh, even though the force field of their impact probably helped a lot. Uh, but he was like, Gork and Mork were looking out for us. And so all of them were so fucking ready to get out of their damned space hulk and cause so many problems and this is what started the second war for armageddon ah okay. um because it was so unexpected like commissar yarrick has a quote it says he was an avalanche from an unexpected quarter a thunderbolt from a clear sky because he just fucking arrived you yeah. think about that he just oh, like uh, they're just kind of did business as usual lottie dotty gigantic industrial complex big ass rift in space opens up Space Hulk arrives, flies in at Mach 5, breaks all of your ships and lands on your lands on your continent, destroys like a good majority of your continent, and then a bunch of green skins start coming out. You're like, where did this guy come from? Yeah, as if the initial impact of the Space Hulk was not bad enough. That's already like, oh god, this is the worst day that's ever existed. Then it's like, oh, by the way. There was a Y inside, and now it wants to kill anything that managed to survive this meteoric explosion. Literally uh, meteoric. Yeah. Like, literally. Yeah, um, quite literally, yeah. So, this is kind of where the fight and the and the, the back-and-forth rivalry with Commissar Yarrick eventually mm -hmm. took place. So... Commissar Yarrick, you remember him? He has the laser eye and the orc claw yep. for an arm. Yep, I do. Uh, so, he said, being somewhat soft, it is extraordinarily rare for, uh, hu sorry, hum humies to gain humies. respect from, yep. from orcs. Very rare for them to gain any respect from orcs. Uh, the only, like, often space marines have some, you know, skill, particularly Commander Dante, but it was Commissar Yarrick that was the had the most admiration because he was quote 
as eager to shoot his own lads as the foe. <laughs> and if like that's what took, that's what took to gain victory, it was a th he was a thorn in Gaz's side. And Commissar Sebastian Yarick and Sebastian. Sebastian Yarick. And so Gaz has some like respect for Yarick. Mm. He's got some good respect for Yarick. Also, you know, he was he was the kind of leader they could respect. He also wore the colors of the Goths, which is black with red trim. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which boosts his esteem even further. Sure. And Yark was the only one Gaz never cursed. Which oh. was pretty high praise. Yeah. Um, often orcs would come face to face with the infamous Yumi boss and express large amounts of disappointment because he was only the size of a human. <laughs> they expected something so much fiercer with all the with all the rumors, it, I would assume. It was said that orcs that recognized him were always killed because of his laser eye vision. <laughs> however, however, also because they stood in like a jaw agape, surprised at how small Yark's puniness was, that they opened mm -hmm. themselves up to being killed by him. <laughs> so... <laughs> So the, the orcs were like, wow, that's a great tactic, even if it was the sneaky blood axe kind of tactic. <laughs> the sneaky blood axe kind, yeah. This, this, is, this is an ability the blood axes have, I think, in-game. It's a stratagem that lets you, like, redeploy your units before the game starts, and it's called, I've got a plan, lads. <laughs> I, I Yark's probably the only, um, well, he was, like, one of the first commissars that I learned about specifically because of his renown with like the orcs um and how like apparently like like with how uh their psychic energy w can could like work against them because like oh my god yark he's so he's on un he's unkillable so like they literally can't kill him yeah he's he's the he's the biggest toughest doomie in the world the humans are like, all weak scum that deserve to get stomped yeah except for one eye yark he knows how to fight does. And isn't that like the only reason his power claw works is because all the orcs believe that it works, so it just I actually, does. I actually don't know. I feel like he may have retrofitted it a little bit. It would oh, okay. make sense, but at the same time, that totally could be the case. Yeah, Yarg was like one of the first people I had heard about in 40k because uh, first it was the orcs, and then they were like, "Oh, you ever hear about Yarg? He's he, they they can't kill him because they're so stupid. They believe he's unkillable, so they can't. They literally cannot kill the guy." I'm like, "Oh, that's cool." That it's not just a one-way street, that it's actually, it, you know, your wah power of belief can backfire on you. It, it can. There's always that joke that, uh, that, you know, the Emperor is only alive because, um... <laughs> the orcs you, believe it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. eventually, the orcs... I, I guess I'm gonna skip a lot of the War, so we'll the war of Armageddon because it's so long. But they eventually bailed. Uh, they left due to the, the fighting. But, um, Yarrick pursued him like mad. He pursued him like crazy. He's like, I'm gonna oh. fucking kill this guy. Oh, the orcs left because of the fighting. Like the orcs couldn't conquer Armageddon, so they Yeah, dipped. but but orcs are never beaten, you know? <laughs> yeah. They chose to leave. They weren't defeated. They chose to leave, right? Yeah, exactly. They they left. You know, that was it was the <laughs> prophet of Gork and Mork. Of course, so, of course. Uh ba so basically they bailed for a, a while. However, Gaz is, is actually a pretty smart ass guy. And he kept on, like, pulling back and back and back and until the Huey's supply lines were getting kind of dwindled. Mm -hmm. And then they overstepped their, their like, fighting, the, the orcs, or the, um, the Yarrick did. And so eventually when they got to the planet, there was a ton of orcs in wait for them as, like, a giant ambush trap because they had pushed themselves too thin. Yeah. So eventually, Yarrick actually was making a giant last stand in the wreck of his Bane Blade. Which he specifically used to ram one of the orc vehicles. <laughs> um, and so he was making this gigantic, like, epic last stand against the orcs. And so yeah. Gaz saw an opportunity to finally display his dominance over the other greenskins and actually had him captured. Hey. Okay. So he wanted to use Yark to assert his dominance over the other orcs. So to prove that he knew how the Humies worked. So <laughs> he threw Yark down a garbage chute. Of the Space Hulk, uh, <laughs> okay. proclaiming that the human would escape because the other orcs were doubtful because none of them had survived being thrown on the garbage chute. <laughs> but Yark, a few days later, would resurface. 
He, he came back, and then Gaz was like, here, I'm going to throw Yarrick in with a bunch of other Imperial prisoners, because he knew that the Humi would learn how to fight them. And then, true enough, Yarrick instigated an entire revolt and managed to reach the Space Hulk's bridge, where he sought to activate the self-destruct ability. Whoa. But they, they caught him and stopped him in time. Okay. And instead... This uh, convinced the other orcs that Gaz could indeed predict the human's behavior because he was the smartest, <laughs> like most powerful orc with a prophet from Gork and Mork. Okay. And so what he did was he actually ordered the Mad Doc to return Yark's claw and eyes back to him, the the, the other eye, oh, and yeah. then had them all escorted into a shuttlecraft in which he let them leave. Huh? He just let him go. He let him go. Huh. I I would not expect that. Is that and just Gaz, because he's he he, he wants like a uh, strong rival? He wants to go chase him again? Well, he respects him for one. I sure. think uh Crump and a captive is also not a very like excitingly orc thing. Oh yeah, that'd be super boring for them because it can't fight back, it wouldn't put up a good fight, and that's I guess it's that's not kind a good scrap. Yeah. Also, he was making a point. He was like, check it out. I know how humies work. I know how the human, uh, how humies work and, and how they, how they operate. Cause I'm the best orc. Cause I'm a prophet from Gork and Mork. Look, he's going to escape the trash shoot. He did, you know, Hey, look, he's going to lead the revolt. He did like, Oh, he, he knows everything. The boss understands. <laughs> he's the biggest, baddest boss. Oh, orcs. <laughs> they're, they're so stupid. I love it. Oh, uh, orcs. I love talking about orcs. So it's so it's so dumb. much fun. <laughs> they're like I said, they're the they're the breath of fresh air that the 40k universe needs. They're still terrible, but they're so entertaining. So eventually this after like a couple decades of rebuilding or a long time of rebuilding, he eventually came back to Armageddon for the third war of Armageddon. To finally have his big big final fight, you know? Sure. Um, I'm I'm gonna skip all this because like I said, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot uh, however, stuff. eventually, um uh, like with the Imperium, we're always scared of so many orc tribes being like combined. That's the point of Gaz, is like Gaz leads like the biggest war boss war. He yeah. can come he can unite the clans, which is fucking horrifying. Yeah. And one of the scariest fears ever. Oh, yeah. Um Because if uh, the how... orcs were actually united and fighting together with their numbers and everything, they would easily conquer everybody. The Imperium would be fucked. Yes. It would be. That's the scariest part about the orcs, is that if they worked together, they probably would win in yeah. terms of the, the universe. Mm -hmm. But eventually, I believe Gaskell, <clears throat> because this, this was a long war, he kind of eventually said, nah. He's like, a bunch of green visions <laughs> began to overwhelm him. And he was like, all right, Gork and Mork are telling me I should leave. Oh, really? He just he dips? His head hurt. Oh, no. His head, <laughs> His head hurt oh, really bad. And no. he was like, Gork and, Gork and Mork's, uh, like, he, he, I think he actually got bored. Unironically. <laughs> Cause, cause the war was becoming like a battle of attrition, yeah. And and his head started to hurt really bad. And then he, Gork and Mork were talking to him and yelling at him really loudly. It's like, hey, you leave, get out of here. This is boring. Fuck you. Oh, what what could be more interesting? Like it's just it's a big fight. It's just never ending fighting. You'd think that's what they want. No, it was it was literally like a battle of attrition. It was like endless. It was just lobbing stuff back and forth. There was no good crump. There was nothing. Uh, it was just a meat grinder, and it wasn't the good kind. <laughs> What's the good kind of meat grinder? Like, like the like. Uh, I don't think you understand. Like, uh, demons are now fighting in the orc's place. Like, Armageddon will never be will never be normal. Gork and Mork told him to go somewhere else. Well, I guess if Gork and Mork tell you to do something, you listen. You do. His head, he had his head hurt. Get some fucking aspirin and soldier through it, pussy. So, so in 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 the in the purpose of time, 
basically he left, rebuilt his forces, is is now doing his new orc war and has a new fleet and he's he's doing his own thing. We're now in like modern time of gas cools off, killing and murdering, causing problems. He he was fighting, uh, he was fighting a ton of um, uh, what was it? Uh, fighting some space wolves in the more recent uh, group. He was uh, I think he actually had his head severed. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Ragnar Blackman cut his head off. And then Mad Doc Grotznik put his head back on. <laughs> right, he put it on an even bigger orc body. Okay, I he mean... got his head. Yeah, he got he got put on. So the new mini that you see, that new uh -huh. mini is literally because he got his head cut off and he reattached it to an even bigger orc body. Oh, I was I was gonna ask this whole time. Did he have that big like mech body? Uh, and, and the only reason he's got that is because his head got cut off and he slapped it on a bigger frame? Yeah. He, he got his head cut off and Mad Doc Grotznik <laughs> put it back on a different body. Okay. Yeah, look at look at his neck. <laughs> look at, you, can, you can see the stitches in the metal. Look very closely uh, at his neck. Oh, hold on, I, I, gotta, I gotta open the full size one. Uh, oh my god, you can see stitches on his neck! Yeah! Oh my god, they did just hack him. They did just sew him onto a bigger body. Yup. And it worked. Yup. Orcs. 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 <laughs> so, before... So, we're getting near the end of the episode. Gaz, oh. Kolthraka. Uh, however, I want to talk about Makari before we end this episode. Makari sounds we should, familiar. We should talk about Makari. Makari is an extremely lucky Grot who is the uh, banner oh. bearer of Gaskell. Yeah. And he lived to the, a wonderful old age of nine where eventually <laughs> Gaskell Thraka accidentally sat on him and killed him. I remember this. The, the, the orc fan community was so fucking pissed that canonically... Uh, Makari was sat on and died. <laughs> well, uh, on one hand, it's very orc. On the other hand, it is the assumption that perhaps he isn't actually dead. Uh huh. And he somehow survived. Or that, you know, the spores and the Gretchen or whatever created multiple Makaris through the world. Like, there's been many Makaris, quote unquote. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he has I, I, a new he has a new mini, so the concept is is generally like, oh, maybe he does actually, maybe he is alive, but it, it's like a different Makari or like they're all Makari, we're all Makari, I don't know. <laughs> we're all Makari, yeah, um, yeah. I I remember like the the that mini came out. It was like, oh my god, Makari's back. He's not dead. We're so happy that canon canonically he didn't just get smushed because somebody accidentally sat on him. Not somebody. He, the man, the big boy, the big boss, sat on the the big a boss, the big a boss. Yep. So he's got. <laughs> so um, Makari is the the natural like banner waver for Gaz. He okay. waves the banner around. He is the good boy. He is the smart man. Uh, he well sort of. He just kind of goes around. And he's like a little little mascot for Gaz. You know, mm -hmm. and he's got other things. He has like the lucky stick, which is which is nice. Okay. Um, good old the lucky stick. But the main thing I find hilarious about Makari is that. Um. Wow, that's an old picture. <laughs> those minis are so. Oh old. yeah, those old. are really old. Holy shit. <laughs> um, but the main thing about about him is that he has a rule called suspiciously lucky on the tabletop. And it's where he has a two up invulnerable save, which I don't. If you, I know you don't understand that. Yeah, I was gonna say that means nothing to me, but go ahead. <laughs> it, it's it is the most it is the strongest save in the game. Okay. Uh, invulnerable saves normally, unless there's a couple small rules, cannot be ignored. And basically, he'll never take any damage unless you roll a one. Oh. He's like constantly super lucky that he just won't get hurt and he's also got this little a uh, little sword called makari's stabba and it's 
It's got like <laughs> the absolutely worst profile I've ever seen. But if you happen to roll a six on the wound roll, he it does D3 mortals, which is actually surprisingly high. So it's just this really shitty like poke. It just does like I. <laughs> If, if if you roll the hottest you've ever rolled in your life, if you get double sixes, you can do uh -huh. upwards of six mortal wounds with this fucking thing. If you roll the best, it's like, like, probably like a point zero 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 one percent chance. But if you get six mortal wounds with this fucking thing, you could kill three space marines. Like, it's, whoa! <laughs> it's so like you can like one tap a custodian. It's it's like eh. Can you imagine the poor custodian? That was like towering over Makari. And then his last living thought is his last living thing is seeing this little guy just eh, and then he falls over. He's just and his last thought is that that's the last thing he sees is Makari just shanking his fucking ankle. Yep. It's fantastic. Good old <laughs> Makari. Orc. He might have been sat upon, but he will live forever in our hearts and in our miniatures now yes yeah see yeah. yeah so overall that is the the upbringing the history of gazkul mock thraka is he still around oh yeah <laughs> what's, that, he, what's that, he up to getting his head cut off by space wolves <laughs> well i thought he got it reattached or it is or did it get cut off again? No, that's like modern time. I have, I have the hiccups. What the fuck? <gasps> ah! Oh no! The Gork and Mork and the episode and the episode. wait. <laughs> <sighs> um, the uh, the fucking no. That's the thing is that uh, he came out in a very recent box of. Damn it! <laughs> a very recent box. That's his. That's his new min uh, mini, and he's leading okay. a wall. Okay. Ah. Ah. <laughs> End the episode. He's he's still around. <laughs> he's he's still around. He's he's currently. Uh, Shy said he's currently leading a giant wa. And yes, that's, that's what we. That's all we need to know. Which is good because he sounds like a very entertaining swell orc leader. One time he got eaten by a moloch. <laughs> One time he just got straight up. Also, well, what's a moloch? I'm assuming it's a giant creature the, thing that has big, sharp teeth and is. It's disgusting. the giant. Uh, it's the giant tearded monster that Nork Dedog had to pull his sergeant out of. Oh, he got eaten by one of those, and he. Yeah. And obviously, he survived. Did he just punch he, his way out? Is he used his claw and he cut his way out of the beast? That that makes sense. I that's that's dope. That's super dope. Yeah. Um, Damn. Uh, 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 I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go I'm gonna well, see me uh, uh. Chaos. Can't, can't end the episode Chaos. End the episode No oh, oh Bricky I don't know how I think you gotta keep trying buddy I I, I can't properly You're a, you're a genuine dick sucker <laughs> uh, Go see DK DK Diamantes They look shy and sh quite shallow <gasps> Ah <laughs> One more for the road. See you next week. <laughs>